Hello, welcome to this special bonus episode of the Omnisphere video tutorial series. Totally not because I didn't forget to do it initially. Um, I want to talk about Midian automation today. It's a minefield of a subject. I really, really, really hate MIDI. And I try to make it as simple as I possibly can because it just thwarts my brain at every attempt. And one of the problems that I have with it is that there are two almost competing ways that you can interact with it in modern DAWs. You've got MIDI CC data and automation data. Now I attempted some time ago um, in a Cubase tutorial video to discuss the difference between those two. And I'll send, set a link um, for you up above. It is in a very Cubase specific way. Um, and there was a terminology error in that video, by the way. If I'm referring to events, I'm referring to parts. I used the wrong word, it, it annoys me. But today I wanna to talk about it in the context of Omnisphere. First of all, let's have a look at how the two different types of data can be stored and what the those two different types of data are. We'll deal with MIDI CC data first. This is an intrinsic part of the MIDI protocol, something that's existed for decades. And within the MIDI protocol itself are 127 slots called CC or controller change data slots in which you can store configurable information, MIDI data that pertains to the, to the notes, the, the information that you're generating. It's, the MIDI protocol is very beautiful. It's a, an absolutely wonderful, very robust system that still survives to this day, but it is limited. And this limitation of 127 slots and the fact that it's intrinsically tied to the MIDI protocol and not to modern synthesizers is one of our problems. I'll demonstrate that for you now. So what I'm going to do is I want to mess around. Today we're going to be playing with some of these filter controls and I'm going to map this cutoff button to a CC value. What I want to do is right click MIDI CC learn, we get this blue box. And now if I turn um, a knob on my keyboard, let's see, we'll have CC 22. There it is. So I've just mapped MIDI CC 22 to the cutoff on my synthesizer. And so now I can press record, play a note, move the knob on my keyboard, and we see the cutoff change. Let's have a look at where that data is. Here it is, and we can see the different MIDI data lanes. I've set up 22 and 23 for the purpose of this demo. And all of that information that I just recorded Let's close this down. Is here. There it is. And we can zoom in and we can pick this data up <clears throat> and we have a reasonable degree of flexibility over its control. But it's clunky and it has to be manual. I have to specifically tell Cubase to go and find these controller values. And all of this data is baked into the part. That's the important thing. The data is stored as an intrinsic component of the part itself. If I delete the part, we lose all of the CC data as well. But it does work. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying it's clunky. I'm saying there's a better, more modern way to approach it, and that's using automation. So what I'm going to do now is delete that, get Omnisphere back up and running again. And instead of having it learn a CC value and store that information as MIDI data, I'm going to back out of that unlearn the CC22. And this time, I'm gonna say enable host automation instead. Now what that just did, is it tied on this sphere for that one control, for the filter cutoff control of layer A of part one of this multi, because all of these different controls have got their own automation lanes, dedicated automation lanes. It's established a line of communication directly into Cubase modern DAWs understand automation and can deal with it in a much more powerful and flexible way. And there's immediate evidence of that in the graphical interface as we speak, because when I created that connection, it appeared in my quick controls section. Now this is specific to Cubase in different DAWs. I don't know how it's gonna be implemented for you. I can only speak to Cubase, but I use track quick controls in Cubase which gives me a set of eight slots for the most commonly used functionality that I want. 
and with a combination of track controls and quick controls you can get to a much bigger number but let's just stick with this for now for the purpose of today this is fine so what i can do now is i can move this knob on my keyboard and cubase immediately and intrinsically understands because i've configured the track quick controls to respond on these particular communication channels it understands what that control is and i can see filter cut off the beauty of automation is that the DAW is able to speak to Omnisphere and obtain information that the MIDI protocol simply cannot transmit. And what I'm going to do now is record the same part, the same single note with my filter sweep, but this time I'm going to do it via automation. So I'm going to enable automation on this track. Press record. There's my note. There's my filter sweep. Have a look what we got in the background. This time we've got no MIDI CC data at all. We're no longer dealing with MIDI data. We're dealing with automation data. And here it is up in the track above. It's the same kind of view, but I now have greater editing flexibility over it because in Cubase, again, DAW specific, I can actually manipulate, I can curve automation points in between nodes. You can't do that with MIDI CC data. I've got this, it's, it's all baked into one. Here I am dealing with my project. This is my main project view. This is where my part is. And I see the automation as an intrinsic part of the project. I have the opportunity to hide any of these automation lanes that I don't want to see at any given time. I can say, show me all the used infant automation and it comes back again. I've got a much greater degree of flexibility. Here you can see Omnisphere dash part one, layer A, filter cut off. Cubase knows exactly what this information is. It knows exactly what to do with it. We've even got 2.832 kilohertz. That's rocking my world. So this, in my opinion, is how you should get controller data into your DAW. Basically abandon MIDI CC and just stop using it. This is a very personal opinion. It's a highly subjective thing. And I understand that there will be MIDI lovers out there who are absolutely appalled at this opinion. There is one exception and it's to do with part of the baked in MIDI protocol that's very difficult to automate. If we have a look at one of these automation lanes, you see these values up here from velocity down to system exclusive. Automation really, really struggles to handle these. If I want to record pitch bend information, well, let's do it. So there's my note, pitch bend. Let's see what we got. So we can still see the original automation data. There's my filter cut off, but now the pitch bend information is CC, CC data. And this will be the case for any of these fundamental MIDI components. They're such an intrinsic part of the MIDI protocol, just like note on and note off, that automation stays out of its way. And it's very difficult to transfer pitch bend or after touch or poly pressure into automation data. It can be done, but you have to twist yourself into horrible knots using, in Cubase, there's a function called transformer, MIDI transformer that will do it. I don't even want to describe it, it's so horrific. So we have to accept that there's some limited remnant of the MIDI CC world out there that we just kind of have to abide by. Apart from that, everything else can be automated. And instead of your 127 CC channels, you've now got, as far as Omnisphere is concerned, 512 available automation slots. If we have a look in our automation options in Cubase, there's a dedicated channel for Omnisphere. And here are all of my automation lanes. If I go over to right click, resonance, enable host automation, that's now mapped, here we go. Part one, layer A, filter resonance, current value 0 0.505. It's reading the synthesizer, it's directly communicating with it. Up here, we don't have any um, automation data for that um, signal yet, so let's record some. And 
times now. Let's get rid of that pitch bend data. Okay, so that's the basic fundamentals and comparison of CC and automation. What else can we do? We can unlearn host automation in exactly the same way. Show full MIDI learn report tells me what all of my current mappings are. Briefly hopping back to the MIDI world for the moment, you can map individual notes on the keyboard to automation controls with note learn and you can set the range to be inverted with learn inverted so if you select that basically as you turn the knob clockwise the control will go anti-clockwise that's pretty basic stuff and over on the anywhere right click anywhere on the interface that isn't um, a, a modulatable knob and you'll get midi learn and automation sub menu and we've got some options down here. We can clear all MIDI learns, say OK, and Omnisphere forgets all of its um, settings. Sadly, just as a as a kind of a mention of Cubase, there's a bit of an artifact here. It leaves the old names behind. So Cubase still thinks it's mapped to Omnisphere, but Omnisphere is no longer mapped to Cubase. Well, what, what can I say? Just need to have a quick chat about these two unlearn features here. You can map multiple controls to the same CC value and multiple CC values to the same control. So if I, it's easier to actually demonstrate this with CC, so I'll switch back here for a moment. If I CC learn, cut off and resonance. So cut off is set to CC 22, resonance to CC 23. If I go back over to cut off, and move um, my 23 knob, it's now mapped two different controls to this cutoff. So both my controls knobs number one and two are moving two different knobs here. Both control the cutoff value, but only one of them controls the resonance. And now because cutoff is mapped to two different controls, if you want to unlearn both of them simultaneously, the easiest way to do it is from here. Uh, unlearn next MIDI device means the next physical thing I touch on my keyboard is gonna get completely unlearned. So I move knob number one, and now everything that was mapped to knob number one has been um, thrown away. So it's still got knob number two, uh, CC23's assignment. You can see both of these controls have uh, are still mapped to 23. Unlearn next MIDI device, move 23. And now both of those values will have been lost. So everything that was assigned to that physical knob that I just moved has been unassigned. Do that the other way around. So there's knob number one. This is knob number two. And now I'll set this one to knob number two as well. So cut off is mapped to 22 and 23. Unlearn next parameter. I now have to, with my mouse, move the cut off control. So I'm no longer touching my MIDI keyboard. I'm interacting with the interface. I move this knob. I've just unlearned all assignments that are connected to it, both my physical controller number one and my controller number two. Once you've set up all of the automation and MIDI um, however you like, you can save that template so that basically every time that you load a multi, you can save a, an information as a default multi. So if you want to set your keyboard up in a particular way with your um, with all of your physical controllers mapped to particular automation values, you can actually save that in Omnisphere. You can save it in Cubase as well, but you can actually save it as an intrinsic part of Omnisphere as a MIDI learn file. You can see, I just don't do that. I keep all of my information inside Cubase, and obviously that's the ability to load them back again. There are a couple of other features that I have literally never used. Clear all browser lens, I don't even know what it does. Um, I know it throws away everything that's not intrinsically connected to a multi, but I you know, figure that out for yourself. There's no mention of it in the documentation. I, I, I don't even, I'm not even interested. And make MIDI learned controls omni. Um, ordinarily automation operates on a particular MIDI channel. 
if you um, select that that value, it doesn't matter what track you have selected in your DAW on the sphere, we'll still hear the automation that's coming from your physical MIDI device. So it is a headbending subject. I have real difficulty with it. To be absolutely honest, I noticed that I'd forgotten to record an episode on automation and I just kind of hid and somebody had to call me out and say, you know, I would like an episode on automation. It's like, okay, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. But yeah, I try to keep it as absolutely simple as I possibly can. I use track quick controls an awful lot and I very rarely go past more than eight assignments for any individual synth because I'm writing a song, I've got a sound. These are the things that I want to be able to control and eight is fine for me. If I need to go beyond that, I start saving them as banks of quick control values, but that's like really super rare because my brain just can't handle it. It's just too much. Keep it simple as much as you possibly can and automation is awesome and really, really powerful. Start trying to interact between MIDI and automation and manage both systems at the same time. And if you're as dumb as me, your brain will just collapse and fall out of your ears. That's automation dealt with, hopefully, as much as I possibly can. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing. It helps me out an awful lot. Thanks very much for watching.